Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Saturday night, uh, December 22nd. Wow, it's almost, it's almost Christmas time. <coughs> it's almost the holidays. Uh, what that means is many of us are are getting ready for New Year's resolutions, right? And with that comes um, a change in mentality, a change in um, goals and mindset. And for many people, that is a commitment. What's up, Artemis? I was just thinking about you, Artemis. Um, what, for many people, that means a new commitment to fitness and health. And for many people, that comes with a history of struggle, a history of, hey, Deidre, a history of pain, a history of frustration, a history of, of trying over and over again to commit to, to losing the, those 20 pounds or, or, or getting back into that, that size X, whatever it was that you wore or lose or whatever it was. So uh, that's around the corner. And I want to be here for you guys uh, in the new year, but also before that to help you get a plan started, a plan together, a strategy together to get through that. Because the fact of the matter is we are all doing it wrong, right? We struggle with all these uh, belief systems that have been pushed upon us, some of it by science. Uh, what's up, coach? Um, some of it by science that has been rebunked or revisited or reconsidered some of it by by you know so societal pressure um modernization all those things that, that that have made life fun have also made um it harder to be in shape so we have these these thought processes around carbs and around cravings and around fat loss that are in many 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 ways wrong and i'm here to help you guys revisit that re, you know see it from the right the right perspective and hopefully go into 2019 with a better way of approaching things. Because the truth is, guys, we don't see things right, right? The truth of the matter is we are uh, aiding and ab uh, uh, abetting, abating, is the right word? Um, ourselves in this addiction, right? Addiction to carbohydrates, to sugar, but more importantly, addiction to feeling good all the time. And the the fact of the matter is our bodies are not meant to work the way we're trying to make them work and so when we're told these quick fixes like no sugar for 30 days or 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 no carbs or 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 cleansing uh we're trying to we're trying to fix all these these maladies and these addictions uh with these band-aid solutions and that's not how things work uh, and so if you want real help and trying to figure out how to change who you are, change your fitness uh, permanently, I can help you. I can help you understand why we are addicted to sugar. I can help you understand why we have been told that we need to eat every few hours when in essence we actually need to be be reducing the, the eating window that we consume food like our ancestor, ancestors did for thousands upon thousands of years. Um, so, you know, we're hooked. We're hooked on sugar. We're hooked on feeling good. We're hooked on hiding all of our other life pressures with food, right? With with uh, being entertained by the television or by our cell phones. We are. It isn't the devil, John. It isn't the devil, but it is bad for us. Uh, most of our uh, most of our uh, maladies uh, and illnesses have been linked, like John has alluded to, have been linked to sugar. And so the secret is. It's understanding, right? Understanding that, yes, our bodies do need a fuel source to live and survive and to function, right? Because we never allow our bodies, right, to not have any sugar, right? For the most part, most of our bodies have to use sugar to survive, to thrive, to live, to function, right? What we need to be doing, what's up, George? Uh, hey, Rosella, what we need to be doing, guys, is getting back to what our bodies were meant to do. I learned about 20 years ago um, that I was doing things wrong. I really learned, uh, not 20 years ago, about, about two years ago, but I, I really learned recently uh, that all this time I've been using what is a, a, a Porsche or a, a, a Maserati or a nice vehicle, a high-end vehicle. I've been using it to do, to plow in, in the fields, right? So our bodies were meant to function uh, at, 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 at a high capacity and we are using them in the wrong ways by using sugar as our main fuel. So 
but m much of it's not our fault. You know, through industrialization, through modernization, through convenience, we and through and through hab habit habits that we've created, we are dependent on sugar. We are dependent because we have to have sugar. Hey, Roxana, we have to have sugar from 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 when we wake up until we go to bed. Right, our bodies run continuously on sugar. So what we need to do, guys, is is build in a strategy that allows us to reduce that dependence, right? And many of us try to do it, and, and the fitness industry tries, tries to teach you to do it in bits and pieces, never really addressing the real need that we need to permanently remove our dependence on sugar, right? I don't believe we can do it permanently. I don't believe the way we live with kids and friends who aren't ready to take that path with us, that we can't get rid of sugar, in our lives, we can't get rid of bread and pasta and rice and, and candy and all the good things we enjoy and wine and Pepsi and soda. We can't get rid of it. It's too it's impossible. So when we try to do all these things that are temporarily trying to, to rid our bodies of, of this, it does not work because eventually we get back to it. All right. So if you want to enjoy things, if you want to enjoy um, the occasional bread, if you want to enjoy the occasional rice. Um, then you can, there's ways to do it, right? If you're like John and can do zero sugar, then that's great. But many of us can't or won't do that, right? But what I'm trying to teach people is a way to do it that is practical, that you can do. I don't do zero sugar, never have done zero sugar. And I've gotten leaner and leaner uh, into my 40s, leaner than I was maybe when I played football in college because I've learned that all I have to do is make sure, number one, that I don't allow my body to fill up capacity of sugar, which means it has to store fat. That's the first step. It's understanding that we don't have to eat all the time. We don't have to eat sugar for sure all the time, but we don't have to eat all the time, right? So the first step is realizing that, that I'm never going to allow my body to be so over-consumed with carbohydrates that it's forced to store, to store body fat, number one. Number two, I don't need to go zero sugar. Right? I don't need to go zero sugar forever. All I need to do is make sure that I do it regularly enough so that my body regularly taps into fat stores. Right? So for me, I, you know, every, every weekend, I enjoy my carbohydrates. Right? But then I, I don't overconsume to the point where Monday, Tuesday, I can't work my way back down to zero glucose in my body and force my body to burn fat. Right? So... We have to realize that we have a dependence, guys, on sugar, a dependence that we must break, right? If you have to go no sugar and, and it's your goal to be no sugar forever, then, that, then that's one path, right? The way I uh, suggest and, and, and teach is that you, you structure your week and your month and your life around regular intermittent periods where you allow your body to have some things you enjoy with your kids, with your husband, with your wife, with your friends, but then you regularly also strategize and plan and prepare and program your life so that you are tapping into all the fuel that's stored, all the glycogen, emptying it out and allowing your body to burn body fat regularly, right? So we're not, but, but it's a mindset, guys. We're not meant to eat food all the time. We're not even meant to eat food for fun. We're the only animal, I keep saying this, we're the only animal in the animal kingdom that eats for pleasure, right? The fuel is meant, food is meant to be fuel to help us function and live and survive. It was never meant to sit around a table and watch football games like I'm doing now while you eat pretzels and drink beer. It was never meant for that, right? But the animals that are human beings have come to a point in our existence Right, over after thousands upon thousands of years where now we can enjoy at a desk or in a chair or in a bed. We can enjoy consumed uh, processed foods and, and watch television or, or be on our iPads or whatever. And so, yes, modernization is great. You know, iPads and iPhones and, and, and Alexa and, all, and cars are, are all great. But what they've robbed us of is what our human bodies were meant to do. Right, which is which is function, right? Which is get up and move and hunt and gather and build, right? And eat in in small windows of time, right? We've flipped that upside down. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It is what it is. It's the reality. But if you want to be fit, you have to overcome that reality and that mindset and think. Look, I'm not meant to eat like that. So 
you know, my friends, you know, people who know me, they say, you know, always tell me, don't you have any fun? Don't you enjoy yourself? I have fun all the time. I just know how the body works. It's very predictable. And so I make sure I don't do things that I know based on science, based on based on research, I know will put my body into a state where the storage of fat is highly uh, possible, right? And then I make sure I do things that, that put my body in a position to burn fat regularly, right? I want to look good. I want to be healthy. I want to be around for my grandparents, for my grandkids, like my mother was not for her grandkids. I want to be around for them. I want to be able to play basketball with my son. I want to be able to, to have my daughter be proud of me. I want to be able to, you know, walk around and be confident uh, at a pool or on the beach well into my 50s and 60s, okay? So to do that, I can't be like everyone else in the world who, who just wants to live and have fun every moment of every freaking day, right? Living was not to be enjoyed every moment of every day, right? I don't even, if you, if you think back to maybe your great, great, great grandparents, right? Or, or our ancestors, they didn't wake up trying to figure out how they were going to enjoy the day, right? No animal in the whole animal kingdom wakes up thinking about how they're going to enjoy the day. We have to enjoy every hour of every day, which is ridiculous. And so what you have to do is change the way you think, your mindset, right? I don't have to enjoy every day, but, but because I'm doing that, I'm able to have great moments that I really, really enjoy, right? By being able to sacrifice something, being a grown-up, Right, and not a five year old that has to have everything you know, has to enjoy and have fun all the time. I can be a grown up and sacrifice some pain, some discomfort, some and, and kind of you know, reserve some of that for moments later, right? And so, sugar is the main example of that. We have to have it all the time, and now because of that, our bodies have to run on this inefficient fuel because it runs out quickly, and our bodies never tap into what is the real full fuel which is ketones, which is what your body breaks down uh, from, from, from uh, body fat. And so, what I, again, what I'm trying to, I'm kind of rambling, sorry guys, but what I'm trying to get across to you guys is that as we go into this new year, right, let's commit to being different. Let's commit to changing who we are, changing our, our mindset about, about fitness. Understand that we are not meant to consume sugar, all the time. We're not really meant to consume food all the time. All right. So what we need to do is, you're right, John, we need, we need to see food as fuel, right? And not necessarily as fun or rewarding or party time. Um, but we can do that too. But we have to understand that we have to view it differently than everyone else in the world if we want to look different than everyone else in the world, right? And then if we begin to do that, then we can let our body begin to use the body fat that it's been reserving for years, begin to tap into that as body fuel, as, as, as fuel, fuel, fuel for our body. Use our body fat instead of using carbohydrates and sugar. What's up, real? Um, so to do that, we have to make sure that we regularly empty out our glycogen and our, blood, and our, and our body storage of sugar, right? So once we begin to minimize how much sugar we put into our body, not eliminate it necessarily, but minimize it, Right, begin to reduce that over time until it's almost zero, or at least it's zero for several days in a row. Then we begin to understand how we deplete whatever's in our body via workouts, right? Via high intensity workouts like we do at my company, Ultimate Muscle Confusion. Right? If we begin to do that, right, then we can have periods of time where our body is emptied out of glycogen and glucose. And then we can begin to tap into fat as a fuel source. Okay? So the way I do it's easy, right? Some people like John can go hardcore and go zero sugar um, and make it work. Many people can't. And so for those who can't uh, or those who want to come in and out of it, right, you know, have periods of time where they have no sugar uh, but still want to have some time when they can enjoy, um, you know, a beer with their friends or they can enjoy a pizza with their friends, uh, I recommend people use an exogenous ketone supplement like I use. Uh, Keto OS is my brand uh, that I use, but that allows me to quickly go from a period over the weekend where I'm consuming some carbs to a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when I reduce my carbohydrates to zero, right? I work out, but yet still have energy to do that, right? Still have uh, the absence of cravings when I do that, right? If you try to do that without uh, any aid, and, and I'm sure John will attest to this, 
um, your body goes through a period of time where it has no fuel, right? So your body, your body's, you know, uh, will will release hormones to to make sure you feed it, right? So if so, there's a time where you have to be disciplined, have to fight through cravings, fight through a natural and real need for your body to have fuel source, a fuel source, and because you're not giving it glucose and your body has not begun to create ketones, there's a period of time where you have headaches, you're, you're tired, you can't focus or concentrate. Um, and what that does is, is, is it diminishes your pr productivity, uh, not only in the weight room or on the track or, or on a treadmill, but at work. You can't think as well, you can't train as well. So when you do that, an easy way to transition through that is to take an exogenous ketone supplement like I take. Uh, and that eliminates all that because it gives your body the same byproduct product your body would have after it it converted body fat into energy, which is ketones. So by giving your body a fuel source that's not glycogen, you're not stopping your body from burning through glycogen, but you're also not having that period of time where your body's kind of figure out where to get energy from. So, so yeah, carbohydrates have are 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 not as good for us as we think, right? We know they're bad for us, but they're worse than that. They're worse than bad for us. But I'm not one to be impractical either and think that we can all go zero sugar forever. I mean, maybe 30 days, maybe two weeks, but to think that we can do it forever is, is, is challenging, right? Some people can, many of us can't. So my, my strategy um, that I coach is one that uh, teaches people to minimize the eating windows every day, right? So intermittent fasting uh, at its fullest. You know, so we're going from a typical American eating window of 17 hours to a to a fasting hour, fasting uh, window of 17 hours. So we're trying to over time flip flop that. Most people, when they wake up, they have some sort of food, usually carbohydrates. You might wake up have cereal, wake up have you know some toast with your with your with your breakfast or a bagel, you know, and then when you go to bed, you know, typically you have some some carbohydrates. Uh, very close to bedtime. So that window is 17, 18 hours for many people, right? Um, what, I, what, I'm try what I did and, and what I prepare people to, to work toward is, is flip-flopping that window to going from a window where you, where you fast, intermittent fast. Uh, and we do a quasi-fast with ketones, with, with amino acids, and with Bulletproof Coffee, where you're giving your body amino acids, ketones, and you're giving your body some, some dietary fat. Uh, but we're trying to flip-flop that. And by doing that, you're giving your body less time to build up that glycogen re uh, uh, reserve in your body, right, over time. So now you're, re you're, you're reducing your body's dependence on sugar. You're reducing the amount of sugar you have in your body. And then as you're doing this, we have to be training. We have to be getting better and getting more lean muscle, but getting in better shape so that when we come out of those periods, like a weekend, when you enjoy your glycogen and your glucose, you can work through it quickly. So when you take your exogenous ketones, like I do on a Monday and Tuesday, you eliminate your carbohydrates, you train your way through that, that reserve, that reserve tank. Now by Tuesday or Wednesday, if you're, if, you're, if you're smart about it and have trained hard enough, then now by Wednesday, your body has eliminated all the glycogen and now you're burning body fat, right? And you do that uh, repeatedly every week. For in every month, and over time, you're never building up any more body fat, and you're reducing your body fat every week of every year, and over time, your body composition begins to change, and permanently, right? And you've done it in a way that is somewhat seamless, right? I've I've gone through this transition for about two years, and nobody had worse eating habits than me. I, I used to wake up at night to eat, uh, trying to gain weight in college. So um, it's been seamless. I, I've never gone through a 30-day detox. I've never gone zero sugar, um, any of that. But I eat far less sugar than I used to. Uh, my eating windows are 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 far are far smaller, right? I fast intermittent fast from 10 p.m. ish to about 3 p.m. the next day. So my eating window is about seven hours. Uh, but within that window, I typically I don't watch what I eat tremendously unless it's a Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but because it's smaller, I can't eat as much. And I've continued, now I'm 46, I've continued to get leaner, uh, more muscular than I did when I was in my 20s playing football and lifting weights every day. Um, so you can do it. It can be done. Um, it's a strategy that I believe is, is simple, 
not always easy, but simple. Um, and hopefully, you know, you know, more people will reach out to me and I can begin to help teach them how to do this, how to, how to continue to keep muscle. If you're a guy, how to keep muscle, uh, but yet continue to remove body fat and do it in a way that doesn't require you to go through any of these crazy detoxes as would be done for a typical addict. Right. And we're addicts. We're all we're sugar addicts. We're we're entertainment and pleasure addicts. Right? That's what it is. We're sugar and pleasure addicts. And we have to begin to we have to first accept that and then secondly understand that we have to address it to be better. Like if you don't if you don't admit that you're sugar and, and pleasure, pleasure part of it is very important. We are sugar and pleasure addicts. If we don't at first admit that and and commit to getting help <laughs> Right, getting some real help for that and changing that behavior, then we won't ever change our body composition. Right, we won't ever be at our ultimate health, at our ultimate peak. Hey Kim, so uh, that's the that's the key. Admit you're an addict to sugar and pleasure. Um, hit me up. I'll show you ways to make the transition easier, and then let's go into 2019 with a commitment to coming out of this next year. Uh, being even better than we were this year and every day after that just get continuing to get better because it is very simple and the strategy um, can be seamless. All right, so enjoy your Christmas. Uh, today's the 22nd, today's Sunday. I'll probably check in with you guys um, Tuesday, maybe Tuesday, uh, Christmas Eve. Um, but have a good one. Again, if you, if you are going to be consuming carbs, which we all are, uh, remember our bodies work in predictable ways. So if you go, de you know, meal after meal after meal, you know, back to back to back meals um, with with high glucose, high carbohydrate content, your body, your body's ability to store it is going to be at capacity. And so at that point, your body must store body fat. So don't let this be uh, another year of storing body fat. Get out, get a workout in. Maybe don't eat breakfast that day uh, if you plan on having a bigger dinner. Uh, but find find ways to make sure we burn some of that that tank out, and don't fill it up as much. Um, you know, back to back to back days. All right. If you have any questions, please continue to contact me. Send me a text. Send me a link. I mean, send me a, a message. Um, follow me on YouTube and and Instagram at Coach Bobby Blueford. And uh, you know, continue getting better, guys. Continue wanting to get better. Continue continue to look at yourself. And, and ways that you can improve and reach out to people, you know, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else, you know, find people to support you, push you, motivate you, and inspire you to be the best version of you um, that you can be. All right, guys, talk to you soon. I love you all. Merry Christmas. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.